understanding. Then the new man in you will prosper. What kills the new man in you, whenever the new man is not fed, Joy to the one who is Let us receive our King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven. Yeah.
that is for our God. Hallelujah. Amen. He's worthy to be worshipped. Amen. Amen. The wise men traveled all over the east with their gold and their incense. And they bowed down and worshipped. Hallelujah. Amen. They were wise. They had money. They bowed down Amen. and worshipped the Lord. What about you? What about you? We have a reason to worship today. Amen. This is for you, for you, for you with your hand clap. This is for you, for you, for you. This is for you, for you, for you. This is for you. Give it up for to you. him. For you. Worship. Yes, Lord. Receive my worship. Hallelujah. Yes,
Aleluya.
atwagala yesu atwagala twali tubuzenga tuli muchizikiza esubi ngali tuwedemu ne mirembe ngampawo natwa
Praise the Lord. No, we can do better than that. Praise the Lord. We can do better than that. Praise the Lord. Merry Christmas to every one of you. I want you to turn to that neighbor and wish your neighbor a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. You guys, where are you? Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. Don't shake the hands, please. Just turn to that neighbor. And welcome and wish that neighbor a Merry Christmas. Yes, yes, wherever you're watching us from, we welcome you in Jesus' mighty name in this service. This is Christmas service here at Nansana, Uganda. And we believe that God is going to touch your lives and God is going to bless you in Jesus' name. Yes, to every one of you who have come in the presence of God, I wish you a Merry Christmas. Let us all rise in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to put, we want to thank God for today. We want to thank God for Christmas. Let's put together our hands and thank God for this day and thank God for Christmas. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Let's thank God for Christmas. Let's thank God for this day in the name of Jesus. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom.
Christmas, we want to thank you for your birth. We are what we are today because you love the world so much and gave Jesus Christ as a gift to the world. And today we enjoy salvation because of the birth of your son in this world. We welcome you, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of God in this place. Angels of God, you're welcome to come and minister with me and also unto the people that have come in the presence of God. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, lift up those hands, everyone, and repeat these words and say, Lord Jesus, here I am in your presence. Bless me today. Touch my life today. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, you may be seated in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. I'm seeing a lot of faces. Our friends from abroad, Jennifer, Linda, Linda, Linda and the family. And all of you, you are almost welcome in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, this is... A very important day in the in the world and even in the spirit realm but it is unfortunate that at such a day as this this is when believers don't come to church believers or the saved people can pray almost every time and again but when it comes to a very significant and important day like this to many they don't come to church but I want you to understand that you was made it this day to come in the presence of God. God is going to bless you. God is going to touch you in Jesus' name. Yes, I have a few minutes to minister the word of the Lord unto your lives because a lot of you, especially ladies, I know you're here, but your hearts are in the kitchen wondering what is happening with soup and food. But I believe that by the time we leave the presence of God, you're going to be blessed in Jesus' name. I want to talk about the birth of Jesus. What is behind Christmas? How come at such a season like this, the whole world is affected? How come it is not a usual day? Child of God, this is what I want you to understand. Christmas, like today, is beyond food is beyond dressing is beyond you having fellowship with family it goes beyond christmas has a very big impact upon the world because christmas introduced god's deliverance and restoration in this world a lot of stuff had gone wrong the devil had disorganized every good plan that the Lord had laid down for man and even in this world. So when you look at Christmas, behind Christmas, there is something very important, especially when it comes to the deliverance and the restoration of God for this world. Today, Christmas is celebrated all around the world. But the question comes why? So we must understand what is behind the birth of Jesus. When you receive the understanding and the knowledge that is behind the birth of Jesus, you're going to end off this year better than how you began it in Jesus' name. Because 2022 is knocking at the door. 
six days from now we shall be entering 2022 but how do we enter the next year when we've not understood such a season like this the bible says in chronicles chapter 12 verses 32 that the children of ishaka they understood the seasons they knew they understood the times they knew what israel ought to do so it is very important child of god for you to understand these times for you to understand these seasons because whenever you understand the seasons and the times that you're living in you're going to be productive and you're going to be useful in this world so the birth of jesus christ was a sign of god's finished work christ reconciled the world christ reconciled man back to god in the book of romans where we're going to begin from chapter 5 verses 11 the bible says in the book of romans chapter 5 verses 11 and not only that but we also rejoice in god through our father through our lord jesus christ through whom we have now received the reconciliation now verses 10 verses 10 reads and says for if we were enemies for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to god through the death of his son much more having been reconciled we shall be saved by his life so you realize that a lot of things had gone wrong because what the devil had to do is to make sure man does not become what God meant him to become in this world. So what the devil did is to make sure that whatever man was meant to do, he does not do it. So sin was prevailing all around the world. And sin was prevailing in man. And when sin came in, also death came in. That means now the devil began to steal, kill and destroy every good plan every purpose of god that was standing in this world but the bible has said in the book of romans chapter 5 verses 11 and not only that but we also rejoice in the lord through our lord jesus christ through whom we have through whom we have now received the reconciliation so that means that as the birth of jesus christ which is christmas today that we are celebrating that means that as Christ was being born, God knew there would be a time to reconcile man back to him. So in verses 10, scripture has said that for, for if, when we were enemies, that means that what the devil had to do is to make man to become an enemy unto God. Can you imagine? When God created man, the plans that God had for man is man was created in his image and also after his own likeness now a person who has the image of god and the likeness of god is now an enemy how did man become an enemy sin made man to become an enemy against god so that means that wherever sin prevailed man continued to be an enemy against god but because of the birth of our lord jesus christ and watch this the Bible is saying, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. That means that the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ brought salvation so that man can receive the life of God again, so that man can live again. So through sin, the devil had made man to be owned by him and now man began to divert from the will of god that means what satan did is to make sure that he imprisons man man was living in prison man was never free the devil removed the liberty he removed the peace whatever was good that god had created that is what the devil removed now because the devil now knew it very well that man can no longer move or do things according to the will of God. That means man, whatever he did, was doing it according to the will of the evil one. So Satan imprisoned man 
and now what he began to do is to make sure that every time and again every trap that he sets against man man falls into it the devil made sure that he, he begins to put snares around man so the life of man and even this world was not like how God had created it so now as Jesus is being born a lot had to be fixed as Jesus is being born a lot had to be put right in the book of first John chapter 3 verses 8 the Bible says that he who sins is of the devil for the devil has sinned from the beginning now the devil made sure that man continues to sin so that he possesses him so that he owns him so now as man was sinning that means he was being controlled by the devil he was being controlled by the powers of darkness so what the devil did as man kept on sinning before the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ he began to rob he began to plunder everything that man had and everything that was in this world that is how the world ended up being corrupted and men being imprisoned by the evil one in the book of Isaiah they show you how man had become in the book of Isaiah chapter 42 verses 22 because now God had to look for a solution to come and intervene the book of Isaiah chapter 42 verses 22 shows you what man had become scripture says but this is a people robbed plundered and all of them are sneered into holes they are hidden in prison houses and they are a prey and no one delivers for the plunder and no one says restore so that is the state that man was in that is the state that the world was in so it reached a time in the book of Romans chapter 5 verses 2 verses 12 the Bible saying therefore just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because all sin now watch this because of one man now who is this man that brought death and sin Adam when God had created Adam when he created Adam and Eve in his own image and also after his own likeness God gave man authority and glory he gave man authority and glory and that is where we find the dominion that man had that means when man fell because of sin the devil took that authority the devil took that glory now listen to me very well the man was created out of the dust the devil took whatever God had given him so now sin spread all through the world sin entered the world through one man and then verses 14 and I love this because now the devil thought sin is gonna be continuous he knew it very well God is in heaven he's a spirit there is no way he can come on the earth so he thought now that all the authority and glory that he had taken from man is ever gonna be in his hands but the Bible says in verses 14 nevertheless this reign from Adam to Moses even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam who is a type of whom to of, of him to come now I want you to analyze the scripture very well why are they saying that the transgression of Adam who is a type of him to come that is the other side of salvation that is the other side of deliverance and restoration that the devil never knew the devil never knew that God can come as a savior in this world he never knew that Jesus Christ can come as another type of Adam when the first Adam failed to stand the way he was made to stand already God had a plan he had a plan for the second Adam to come so the first Adam becomes a type of him who was to come so the type of him to come was to end the type of Adam who was gonna come who is Jesus Christ was the son we are not just celebrating Christmas as a day 
having and i believe a few minutes from now everyone is going to be somewhere having a good meal with family or probably yourself you're going to go somewhere but i want you to understand this the birth of jesus christ was to end was to end every evil the birth of jesus christ was to end the acts that the devil had established in this world even upon man so verses 15 the bible says of romans but the free gift is not the free gift is not like the offense for if by one man's offense many died much more the grace of god and the gift by the grace of one man jesus christ abound to many so that means that when you look at the birth of our lord jesus christ when you look at the birth of jesus the birth of jesus christ which is christmas that we are celebrating today introduce the grace of god that is why in this gift that we were given of christ jesus coming to be born on the earth this gift was carrying the grace of god and child of god this is what i want you to understand <clears throat> in this gift of the grace of god that is where we find the salvation of the salvation plan which was in this one man who is a type of of god become glorious so that means that if you're a child of god your season to be glorious is now now turn to that neighbor and tell that neighbor this is your season of being glorious in jesus name Mm -mm. turn to another neighbor and tell that neighbor this is your season of being glorious in jesus name now the things that i'm talking about are beyond your thoughts are beyond that hairdo that you've done are beyond the food that you're gonna eat you must be revealed if you're a child of god shout three amens the second amen the third amen child of god this is your season to be revealed in glory in Jesus' mighty name. So the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says as he, he comes, he was meant to bring many children of God, many sons of God into glory. Because the Bible is saying where we are in the book of Romans chapter 8 verses 19. Let's read it in IV version. For creation waits. That means even right now, creation is waiting for you. Creation is waiting for you, the believer, to be revealed as a son of God. So what does that mean if we are to be revealed as sons of God? Does it mean that when you're going to be revealed as a son of God, you're going to say the same? no 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 something must happen the spirit of god is going to come upon you god is going to restore you god is going to deliver you your life must be different beginning from now and the following years from any other year you've ever lived in this world in jesus mother name and moreover it must be revealed in glory that is why in the book of hebrews chapter 2 verses 10 let us read this together and we're going to use an IV version. See what is behind the birth of Jesus Christ after Jesus is born. What does the Bible say? Let us all read in bringing. No, 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 no. Let us all read in bringing. Uh-huh. You see? In bringing many sons to glory, it was fitting that God for whom and through whom everything exists should make the author of their salvation perfect through suffering now child of God it is fitting for God to bless you it is fitting for God to raise up your life you know many times when the world stands against us the world disqualifies us you know it is very easy to be disqualified by the world the world will tell you you've never studied this you don't qualify for this you don't come from a good family you don't qualify for this you don't have money you don't qualify for this but listen to me child of god in this season because christmas is about deliverance christmas is about restoration you watch and see what god is about to do in your life 
it is fitting for God to make you rich. It is fitting for God to make you blessed. It is fitting for the glory of God to come upon your life so that you become different from who you were before. So the Bible is saying, in bringing many sons to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom all things, for whom, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the author of their salvation perfect through suffering. Now let's read verses 11 together. Uh-huh. We read both. No, no, no. Let us read both. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That is what I love about Christmas. That is what I love about the birth of Jesus Christ. Because of Christmas, we are in the same family of Jesus Christ. Now, paint a picture. The kind of family where God has put you. In this family, God is the creator. He owns everything. In this family of our Lord Jesus Christ, God is righteous. God is powerful. God is everything. And that is the family that you belong in. So child of God, this is what I want you to understand. Because of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, we see the holiness of God being introduced once again in this world and even unto people. And people are turned to become holy. But the most interesting thing is this. Because of the birth of Jesus Christ, we can also be in the same family of Jesus. We can be in the same family of God. We can be in the same family of the Holy Spirit of God. We can be in the same family of the angels of God. So that means that there is a family today you're going to enter in, which is a spiritual family that is going to turn your life around. And the Bible says, so Jesus is not ashamed to call them brethren. Now turn to that neighbor and tell that neighbor, because of Jesus Christ, because of Christmas or because of the birth of Jesus Christ, Jesus is not ashamed to call you his brother. Now can you imagine... If you have a brother like Jesus, I believe every one of you here has a brother. If you have a brother, put up your hand. Are you proud of your brother? Are you proud of your brother? Now, if Jesus is your brother, you think how is he going to treat you? He's going to shower you with love. He's going to, oh my God, he's going to release the power of God unto you. He's going to deliver you. He's going to restore you. There is a greater brother in this season who is ready to stand in your life and make your life better in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So because it was fitting for many sons of God to reach that level of being glorious. That is why God loved the world so much. And he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is what John 3.16 says. That means that the birth of Jesus Christ also introduces everlasting life in this world. So the birth of Jesus Christ brought back God's glory upon the earth when Adam and Eve had sinned. When man had fallen short of God's glory. As the book of Romans says, chapter 3, verses 23, For all have sinned and have fallen short of, of the glory of God. That means that when man fell short of the glory of God, because when Adam and Eve sinned, the glory was lifted off their lives. And when it was lifted, they found themselves naked and their eyes were open. They were open to evil. Their eyes were open unto death, which became a bondage and to people in the world and which also brought bondages unto the world but because of the love of god he loved the world so much and he gave his son jesus christ to be born so now as jesus christ comes he came with the grace of god you know many times the devil knows it very well that where sin is he can operate more than ever before in people's lives. But people of God, let me tell you this. Christmas broke the power of sin. Christmas broke the working of the enemy. So child of God, this is what I want you to understand. When sin became too much in this world, man is sinning, the whole world is sinning, God's grace 
increase more and more upon the world and even upon the people that is why i stand to say this is your season of the grace of god's blessing this is your season of the grace of god's favor now can you imagine the devil knows it very well that god is holy he does not deal with sin so he begins to make man to sin and as man was sinning and sinning and the world was also sinning what god had to do his grace had to increase more and more that is why in the book of romans chapter 5 verses 20 in iv version the second scripture the second portion of the scripture says but where sin increase grace increase the more now what does that show you if you have been in challenges and situations time and again meeting this challenge meeting this challenge and asking yourself how am i going to come out from whatever is surrounding my life because christmas introduces the grace of god's blessing and god's favor i am here to say the grace of god is going to abound to you and you're about to come out from those challenges and situations in jesus mother name <coughs> because what god would have done here is to destroy man but what he did as sin increased also grace increased now turn to that neighbor and tell that neighbor the more they've made you suffer is the more god is going to glorify himself in your life now the more you have struggled with life because of christmas there is a new chapter that god has opened the grace of god's blessing the grace of god's favor is coming upon your life in jesus mother name that is why in verses 21 scripture reads so that as sin reigned in death even grace may reign in righteousness to eternal life through christ jesus our lord so the birth of our lord jesus christ brought life of god in this world now child of god somebody shout and say life louder than that louder than that we are living in days of life as much as the devil had disorganized every good thing in this world god had a plan for life he had a plan to bring his life in this world and i'm here to say in the name of jesus christ may the life of god begin to manifest in your life in jesus mother name may you see the life of god in your life in the name of our lord jesus christ so as sin increase more even grace increase so that means that the love of god ever was upon this world and was ever upon man that is why what god decided to do as the bible says in luke chapter 1 verses 26 he had to send angel gabriel the one who stands in his presence so that means that whenever you see such a season like this this is a season of the presence of god coming where men are so god is about to release his presence upon your life now what does the presence of god do when the presence of god finds you messed up what does it do when the presence of god finds you bound what does it do so now this angel who is angel gabriel because that is how he introduces himself angel gabriel introduces himself in the book of luke chapter 1 verses 19 as the angel who stands in the presence of god and now what was he sent to do anyway because you must receive good news this season in jesus name christmas brings good news now forget about the news of covid forget about people have died forget about the sorrow forget about sickness and disease i stand to say because of the birth of jesus christ good news is introduced in this world i stand to say in the name of jesus christ this is your season of good news yes i know a lot is being spoken they are talking about covid these new virants that are coming and even the scientists themselves are confused because they told us that there is this virus that has come it is so so dangerous even it is worse than the the virus that came before 
now they are busy telling us if you have two jobs it is okay even when you have it you, you don't need to be hospitalized they are confused themselves but child of god christmas removes confusion of the world and listen to me very well because we are children of god who must go into glory we're gonna stop COVID in this world now wherever you are you are watching me on tv you are abroad let us believe god we are children of god who can stop this in the name of jesus christ we can stop it let us believe god we can stop it let me allow the amen we can stop it how are we gonna stop it we are stepping into a level of living a godly life where the presence of god is coming where we are and when the presence of god comes where we are what is next what happened when the presence of god came because now when the presence of god came this angel gabriel as the bible is, is calling him in luke chapter 1 verses 19 who stands in the presence of god after taking the good news and to Zacchaeus, that is going to have a child, is going to have a child. He went to Mary. Now, people of God, get ready for your good news this season. God is going to visit you in a dream. God is going to come and speak to you. And some of you, I am the most peace of God right now that is bringing good news unto your life in Jesus' mighty name. So the angel was now sent to a city of Galilee called Nazareth in Luke chapter 1 verses 26 but I want you to understand this where he's been sent in this city of Galilee called Nazareth there is nothing good that comes out of Nazareth as John chapter 1 verses 46 as it is written there is nothing good in Nazareth but yet that is why he's sent I'm glad to say if nothing good has happened in these two years because of COVID-19, wait and see how your life is going to be beginning from next year in Jesus' name. So, he comes to Nazareth, and when he comes to Nazareth, a place where nothing good is expected to come, because of the conditions of Nazareth, and because of the place of Nazareth, what God had to do is to put favor and blessings upon mary and that is what you need you need the blessings of god and the favor of god today and in this season as you're entering 2022 the lord has showed me things that are going to happen in 2022 that is why you shouldn't miss 31st it's going to be a great service but you're going to wonder but let me tell you this child of god if favor is upon you if blessings are upon you you can change where nothing good has ever happened you can change that place you can change your life can be more better than before in jesus name and that is what i'm gonna believe god for as you're leaving his presence for you to go with his blessing for you to go with his favor you need the grace of God's blessing upon your life you need the grace of God's favor upon your life so now angel Gabriel comes where Mary is she is in Nazareth where nothing good happens so God had to put favor and blessings upon Mary because what she was about to give birth to what she was about to give birth to carried blessings and favor so child of God what you are about to do in your life you need God's favor. What you're about to do in life, you need God's blessing. The world today as I speak is becoming worse every time and again. Economies are failing. Are we going to be like the world? Are we going to cry like the world? Favor is going to protect you. The blessings of God are going to shield your life. Because whenever favor comes upon you, it's a shield. Favor protects us. So now when God's favor came upon mary when god's blessing came upon mary mary was gonna be lifted up from her past and she was gonna be connected to her future you need to forget the former things there are very many things in the past that can no longer make you better you need to forget 
what happened before that has made that has been making you cry and you need to stop considering old things because the blessing of God is coming upon you and the favor of God is coming upon you God is gonna put away for you and new things are gonna be seen in your life in Jesus mother name yes I know that there are very many things in the past that make you to feel bad to make you cry to make you even fear what your life is gonna be next yeah but I want you to understand this when the grace of favor comes upon somebody when the grace of favor comes upon somebody and the grace of God's blessing upon somebody you forget the past and then there are doors that are open for you for your future in Jesus mighty name Isaiah chapter 43 verses 18 let us read it together what does scripture say we read uh-huh don't let us use NIV version what does NIV version say let us all read uh-huh uh-huh now what is that that is going to make you forget God's blessing whenever the blessing of God is upon you it takes you forward whenever the blessing of God is upon you it connects you to your future don't think you're gonna receive the grace of God's blessing and dwell on your past time to close up those in the past is now and this is the time for your future doors to be open where the favor of God is gonna do new things in your life in Jesus mother name verses 19 let us all read what does it say uh-huh no 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 let us read uh-huh somebody shout and say there is something new God is gonna do in my life in 2022 now what is that that makes you to do something new remember that Mary she's a virgin she's not only the virgin but favor has located her among us all the women she has been located among us all the women she has been blessed child of God there are very many people who believe in God there are very many people who love God but for your sake you're gonna be favored for your sake you're gonna be blessed in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ then there will be something new as Isaiah is saying there will be something new done in your life and you must perceive it you must see it there is a God who's gonna put away in your life there is a God who's gonna put away in your life to turn you glorious in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ so in the book of Luke chapter 1 verses 28 uh, the angel having come in the first thing they told Mary is to rejoice can I see somebody laugh in Jesus name you know a lot of you these two years and probably even the previous years when COVID came in COVID took your laughter away but can somebody laugh now can you imagine you are in a place which is so miserable where nothing good happens and you don't know you have not even seen the manifestation of the favor of God of the blessing of God but they tell Mary in the midst of circumstances in the midst of what you've grown up in rejoice it is amazing rejoice so child of God the same to you I want you to rejoice I want you to be expectant for something better for something great that God is bringing your way in Jesus name Christmas removes sorrow from us. These are not times to be worried about school fees of your children. You don't have school fees. The Bible says that our children will be taught by God. That is what Isaiah says, 54, 13. There is a God who has money for your, school, for your children. There is a God who has your school fees. That is why you must rejoice at such a time as this. You're entering the year when the blessing of God is upon you, when the favor of God is upon you. If nothing good has ever happened to you, if you're living in Nazareth, you are going to make Nazareth to be known because of the blessing that is upon upon you because of the favor that is upon you today we talk about Nazareth why there is a woman who was blessed in Nazareth there is a woman whom God favored God is gonna favor you in this nation God is gonna favor you in this church in Jesus name 
Now tell your neighbor, if you're not going to be favored, I'm going to be favored in this church. Turn to another neighbor and tell the neighbor, if you're not going to be blessed for me, I'm going to be blessed. Among us all women, that means among us all church members have come to talk to you, gentlemen. Have come to talk to you, woman. It is you that God is going to bless. It is you that God is going to prosper. It is not for everybody. It is you, 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 you. In your family, it is you. In your house, it is you. In Uganda, it is you. In the world, it is you in Jesus' name. So now, as the angel comes in, she, the angel tells Mary to rejoice. And I don't know how she rejoiced, but I believe she was in awe. She was wondering, what kind of words am I listening to right now? And then the angel told her, you are, you are highly favored one the lord is with you that is what the birth of jesus christ is about now god is with us and because god is with us we are going to win with him we are going to overcome with him in jesus man and name and the last thing they told him that you are blessed among the women so mary is told to rejoice in a place where nothing good has ever happened let me see a man who's going to be rich in 22 and the coming years standing up and celebrating in jesus mother name ah now sit down sit down now that is your challenge you want to first get a car and praise the Lord. You want to first get a house and praise the Lord. You want to first get money and praise the Lord. But people have understood that when the presence of God comes where you are, whatever God speaks in his presence comes to pass. You don't need for a car to first to praise the Lord. Praise him. And as you praise him, ah, and as you praise him, the miracles will find you there. The testimonies will find you there. Can somebody praise the Lord? Your marriage will find you there. Your breakthrough will find you there. Your promotion will find you there. In other words, what the angel was trying to tell Mary, you have been in sorrow for a long time. You have been in that area for a long time. You have been in debt for a long time. You have been in nobody for a long time. But because of this Christmas, I'm not talking about any other Christmas. I'm talking about this Christmas. Because of this Christmas, you will build that house. You will possess land in Jesus' name. Your life will be restored. If you believe it, somebody celebrate in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody celebrates. <laughs> your husband is coming. Your wife is coming. Your breakthrough is coming. Your testimonies are coming. Your miracles are coming. Somebody rejoice. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, sit down. Many times people... You want to have something tangible to rejoice. But if you want to overcome the challenges, if you want to overcome situations around you, when good news is spoken unto you, God expects you to rejoice. If God has told you that this is a season of life, this is a season of restoration, this is a season of deliverance, that is enough to make you stand up and shout and say, I'm not going to die like my mama. I'm not going to die like my father. I'm not going to be like Ugandans. I'm a different person in Jesus' man and name. So as a believer, let your strength ever be in praising the lord never allow situations and challenges around your life to silence you ever be a praiser praise the lord i praise the lord i'm gonna make it in life i praise the lord i'm gonna be better i praise the lord i'm gonna oh my god i'm gonna do great things next year now this is not a year of you sitting down and saying my god what is gonna happen in 2022 uh -uh. plan for 2022 and let the counsel of the Lord stand. Let God even know that there is a man who's planning to build a hotel. Let God know that there is a woman who's planning for a bigger capital. So that by the time the blessing of God comes and the favor of God comes, there is a plan where you can begin from. God does not want you to begin from space. So, the more you rejoice in the Lord, 
the joy of the Lord becomes your strength. In the book of Nehemiah chapter 8 verses 10, the Bible says, Don't sorrow, do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now forget every sorrow you have been through in the previous times. Now have the joy of the Lord. Know it for sure. I'm going to make it. The Lord is with me. Know it for sure. But God is going to turn your life around in Jesus' name. So Mary was to conceive the Savior of the world in the midst of all circumstances that were talked about in Nazareth. That is why I said, Count 2022 as a great year in your life. In the midst of all failure, cries and tears of the people, see yourself separated from them because you are highly blessed and you are highly favored among us all people in Jesus' mighty name. Now turn to that neighbor and tell that neighbor, I'm not, I'm not going to cry like you anymore. Mm -mm. Turn to another neighbor and tell that neighbor, I'm not dying of COVID-19. Turn to another neighbor and tell that neighbor, I am highly blessed, I am highly favored. The grace of God's blessing and the grace of God's favor is upon you. Do you know what that means? Whether the devil does whatever he's going to do, for you are above what the devil is going to do. The blessing of God is going to lead you. The favor of God is going to lead you in Jesus' name. Now because Mary was going to conceive something powerful who was a son of God. Favor had to be upon her. The blessings of God had to be upon her. In the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 23, the Bible says that, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. Now listen to me very well. For the words of angel Gabriel to come to pass, in the condition that Mary was in because she's a virgin the word of Gabriel or the words of Gabriel had to put on flesh for the manifestation there is a manifestation of God's word upon your life as I'm speaking right now there are many of you you have promises of God the Lord has spoken over your life and you've been waiting to see the fulfillment of what God spoke because this is a season of God's blessing and also a season of God's favor upon your life the words that were prophesied over you are gonna put on flesh and when they put on flesh they will come to pass in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ have you have you any word of God upon your life that you've been waiting for this is time for that word to put on flesh so when the word put on flesh John says the word came and dwelt among us as John 1 14 and when it dwelt among us as what happened the word was full of grace and truth. May the grace and the truth of God be revealed unto you in Jesus' mighty name. So now, when the child was born, Jesus Christ, what happened? The first thing that happened was this. You know, the angels went and told the shepherds about the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. They found them when they were keeping their sheep in the night. When the shepherds reached where the sun was, they never did the right thing. They don't say that they worship the sun. They were just excited and they left. So now, God had to look for a level of people who understand what they call the visitation of God upon the earth. God is looking for people who can understand his power. Who can understand his presence if you can understand the power of god and the presence of god something different is going to happen to you so what happened what god had to do he had to bring divine direction through the star and to the wise men many people say then the wise men saw the star and they followed the star and the star took them where the child was it was not just a star Remember, a star lights at night. That means that there was light in darkness. So that means in the midst of confusion, in the midst of darkness, the light of God stood to bring direction to the world. So when the light of God stood, the first people to see that direction 
where the wise men God is not gonna deal with you when you are still a fool he's giving you knowledge he's giving you understanding so that by the time he brings direction in your life you will know how to worship him you will know what to give to him as God these shepherds can you imagine they told them and they just ran where the baby was for them with no direction they got excited and they came out. But there are people who came with direction. 2022, God is giving you direction for your company, for your business, for your family, for your marriage. He's giving you divine, divine direction. And as he gives you divine direction, you're going to have wisdom. You're going to have understanding. But above all, you're going to be wise. They used to think you got saved and you became a fool. You watch and see what you're going to become after this season. You were never brought to church to be dumb dumb. God brought you to church to become more wiser. To do great things in Jesus name. Turn to that neighbor and tell that neighbor. You're going to be the wise man to follow the star. Yes, I know they talk too much that these are people who studied, they studied the stars. But why them? why them because when they come and they reach where the baby was the bible says they first worshiped even before they gave that means they recognize the presence of god they recognize the anointing of god they recognize the visitation of god the first people never did it there are very many people who have come to church and they've never recognized the presence of God. They've never recognized the anointing of God. But you, God is going to turn you to be wise, to understand what the presence of God is, what the anointing of God is. And when you become a worshiper, then you're going to be a giver. And when you become a giver, then God is going to prosper you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because they came, that is what scripture is saying. So when they came, what did they do? Worshipping God. That is the first thing they did, which these other guys never did. They worshipped the sun. In other words, now, they exalted God above anything. They lifted God above anything. Make God number one from now and see. And be a giver in the kingdom of God. You will prosper in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because the star came and stood where the child was. Now that means this guy is at direction. Child of God, doing things without direction. That era is over. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ as I'm closing. That whatever you shall do from now, you will have direction over it in Jesus' mighty name. Now lift up those hands and say in the name of Jesus. Louder than that. I'm praying for divine direction in everything that I do from now. The star stood in darkness and lit and it was seen. Isaiah says, chapter 9, verses 2. Let's read together. What does Isaiah say? As I'm closing. No, let's all read, please. Uh, uh, louder. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. The people. Uh-huh. 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 Now, I don't know what kind of darkness you're in. But because of Christmas, may you see a great light in your life. If the devil had put your life in the shadow of death, let the light of God shine upon you in Jesus' mother name. And what does that mean as I'm closing? Because these men are seeing light. When you reach that level, Isaiah says, chapter 60, verses 2. We read it together. What does scripture say? Let us read. Uh -huh, four. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Louder than that, four. 
Now, child of God, all you need is now God's direction. Forget who are in darkness. Forget who have died of COVID. Forget companies that are failing. For you are a child of God. So what must you do? You need direction. And this direction is the light of God that shines in darkness. So the Bible is saying, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. So those are different levels of darkness. There is a darkness that covers the earth. And also there is deep darkness upon people. But the Bible says, you who is in the Lord because of Christmas. The, oh my God, you, you. I'm not talking about any other person. You who is blessed. You who is highly favored in this season. Because God is going to bless you. Because God is going to highly favor you. The Bible says the Lord will arise over you. And his glory shall be seen upon your life. If you believe it, shout amen in Jesus name. I stand to prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ. May people see the glory of God upon you in Jesus' name. If they've been seeing problems, if they've been seeing chaos, I stand on this altar to prophesy in Jesus' name. They will see the light of God upon you. They will see the glory of God upon your life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Somebody stand and lift up those hands and say, In the name of Jesus Christ the light of God is going to be seen upon my life now when they begin to see the light upon you what is next verse 3 let us all read what does scripture say we read uh huh uh, the Gentiles shall come to your light and the kings to the brightness of your rising. That is what happened. The wise men came from the east because they saw the glory. They saw something that is not usual. I stand to say, there are great people coming for your life. There are great people coming where you are because you are shifting. You are shifting from an ordinary person. The blessings of God are upon you. The favor of God is upon you. May you be favored today in the presence of God in Jesus name. May you be blessed today in the presence of God in Jesus name. May the grace of God's blessing come upon you right now. May the grace of God's favor come upon you now. There is a class of people you need in life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Look at your phone call. See people have been full in your, in your phone, phone list. Some even have taken years without calling you. But I declare this, whosoever has never added upon your life, may that person be erased from you. And may God add upon you great people in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Okay, turn to that neighbor and tell that neighbor, you may be erased from my life. Hey, let that person live for a greater person to come they had occupied the space there must be room for greater people there must be room for God's blessing there must be room for God's favor verses 5 NLT as we close what does it say verses 5 uh huh your eyes oh my God your eyes no, somebody change it to your level. Put it to your level. Say my eyes will shine. Uh-huh. And? Uh-huh. Yes. Your heart will thrill with joy. That is why they are telling you to rejoice. Your heart, not of sorrow. Your heart, there must be joy in your heart. For the merchants from all the world are coming to you. Oh my God, bless. There is something from the world that is coming where you are. If you believe it, shout and say, I qualify for that. Yes. I'm going to pray for you for the grace of God's blessing to be upon you so that the merchants from all around the world come to you you don't need to go to the world let the world come to you in Jesus name you know when you become great you attract people to come where you are many people want to go to America to go to London to go to those great cities why they are great People sell off land. I'm going where? America. Recently, I canceled people. They said, Pastor, they came with money. And they said, Pastor, I want you to pray for us. 
because after praying for us, we're going to set up this land and this land, and then we'll go travel. I said, we're going where? They, they don't sell inheritance off. I said, you guys, I'm going to pray for you, for God to bless you, the world to come where you are. What you need there, you can have it even here in God. Now to some of you are annoyed because already you are planning to go. But the world is coming where you are in the name of Jesus. Let me hear loud amen. You know, I was talking with people, I think it was the other day, who had come from abroad. I was saying, you know, Pastor, and even the accent had changed. You know, Pastor, when you, are, when you begin to live out, it is very difficult when you come back in Uganda. The life in Uganda is not easy. I said, you guys talk well. No, this is how we talk. Now, listen to these guys. Where you are, God can bring the world. Ah, you've not understood it. Where you are, the world can come. And that is the blessing I'm going to pray for you in the next minutes in Jesus' name. May God, oh my God, may your eyes shine. May your hearts thrive with joy for the merchants all around the world. May they come to you in Jesus' name. Amen. And the Bible says they will bring to you the wealth of many lands. That is why you see the wise men, when they reached where Jesus was, the gifts they gave, they gave gold, they gave Frank incense, and then they gave Ma. Mary had never touched gold. Joseph was a carpenter ever fighting with people. You never finished my chair. You know, a long time ago when we used to grow up, Christmas times were days of our father quarreling with carpenters. They used not to finish the tables. They used to, and I believe that thing came, it came from the Josephs. A carpenter. A carpenter, you tell him, you know, by Christmas, I would have finished your chair. You come and he's three legged. The one leg is not yet put on. The dining. But now, when the wise men came, they brought gold, which the man has never touched. And from there, these guys were able to move everywhere. That is why whenever anything would happen, they would go. They had finances to move them around because of the gold that they were given. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, may God release His grace of blessing upon your life and also the grace of His favor. In Jesus' name, may you receive the grace of God's blessing and the grace of God's favor upon your life in Jesus' name. If you believe it, shout Amen. If you believe it, shout amen. amen. This Christmas is a different Christmas. God is adding value to you. Amen. And greater people from now are coming your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, we thank you for Christmas. From now, I declare let there be direction in people's lives that you will direct them O oh god and to what they are meant to be doing right in life we've seen a lot of things that christmas burst or the birth of our lord jesus christ may you burst new and greater things in every man's life and woman's life who are in your presence today in jesus name Amen. The interesting thing is this. That the wise men, when they got where the child was, they worshipped. We are also going to worship God right now with our offerings. That they worship, that is what the Bible says. And then they open their treasuries. Now every one of you, get a hold of your tithes, get a hold of your offering. Get a hold of your Christmas gift that you're going to give unto the Son and to the Lord. And we're going to give in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the grace of God's blessing and favor comes upon you in Jesus' name. May the grace of God's blessing and the grace of God's favor come upon you right now. Father God, as we worship you with our offerings, bless us in Jesus' name. 
All right. Let us all give in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we worship him. Father, bless every man and woman who are giving right now in Jesus' name. Yes, wherever you're watching us from, there is that number on the screen where you can give your tithes and offerings in Jesus' name. Probably you came with your mobile phone and you want to give through your phone. The number is that one in Jesus' name. Father, bless your people as they give. You can give your tithes, you can give your offerings in the name of Jesus. Yes. So stand, please. Now lift up those hands, everyone. I command the grace of God's blessing to come upon you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command the grace of God's favor to go with you in Jesus' name. Father, look at every man and woman as they are living your presence, O God. May the grace of your blessing go with them and also the grace of your favor go with them in Jesus' mighty name. Let's give Jesus a praise. Yeah, Christmas is about Jesus coming and delivering us and restoring us and saving us. Probably in this place and are not yet saved. And also probably watching me and are not yet saved. And you want to give your life to Christ Jesus. I want you to touch your chest and repeat these words. And say, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that you are Lord and Savior today come into my life and save me i repent of all of my sins wash me with your blood and cleanse me with your blood write my name in the book of life and enable me to enter heaven in jesus mighty name your devil i denounce you the lord jesus christ is my lord and is my savior today i am saved in jesus name amen Father God, look at every man and woman that have given their lives to you. Save them, protect them, and be with them. And write their name in the book of life. Remove their names from the book of death. In Jesus' name, may your hand of salvation rest upon them and be upon them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Let's give God the praise. Let's give God the glory. Yes, and um, before we close off the service, tomorrow we have a very, very great service on Sunday. So don't miss Sunday service. We're going to be here. And even you are watching us, if you can make it tomorrow, Sunday, please come and make it. And God is going to do great things in our Sunday service. Next Friday is our 31st service. We're going to be here from midday, and God is going to do great things in Jesus' name. God has revealed and is still revealing a lot of things that are going to be done in 2022 that are going to happen come with your family come with your friend and let's be in the presence of god and please keep time there is enough space for everyone and we're going to keep the S sops in the name of jesus so i want to encourage you if you can come with your father's house your brothers your sisters come it's going to be a wonderful wonderful day 20 22 is a year of restoration. Amen. Mm, it's a year of restoration. God is going to restore a lot and we're going to learn a lot on 31st in Jesus' mighty name. So prepare a special seed for yourself that will speak ahead of you in 2021. So if you can fast, I know this is festive season, you fast. 31st is going to be something else. The heavens are going to be open. And then after 31st, because 31st is Friday, 
first which is sun, Saturday, we're not going to pray. But then on second, we're going to have our Sunday service. The first service in 2022. And uh, that is when we begin our 40 days of prayer and fasting and seeking the face of the Lord. As we shall explain to you what God is going to do and what God is speaking, participate. 2022 must be a different year in your life. Your life must be different in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yeah, we're going to be fasting for 40 days. We've done it for years and God has done great things in this place and in our lives. On Wednesday when I spoke it, these guys or the camera guys and people around, they just touched their heads like, wow. But we are going to fast. We are going to fast. We are going to give our first fruit and we want to believe God for greatness in Jesus' name. I wish you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. Thank you for coming. May you have a lovely day. May you go enjoy with your family in Jesus' name. Wherever you're watching us from, Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. All you, our friends from abroad who take time because we're in different time zones and you watch us and you participate in the service. God bless you in Jesus' name. Till we meet tomorrow. Bye-bye. will prosper what kills the new man in you whenever the new man is not fed 